you're watching the AI report. We have a good show today. Let's get into it. Sam Altman's cryptocurrency for the world. WorldCoin is not doing so well, apparently, at least in terms of price. When launched, one WorldCoin was worth about $2, and now it's about $1.25. I'm actually not sure that the price of WorldCoin is what people should be focusing on here. That should be true ideally for the users, but sadly I think most of them just wanted a little bit of money and gave up their iris data in exchange. I think the founders on the other hand should have structured this differently somehow. This just incentivizes people to go along with the scan and get 20 or 30 dollars in their pocket without caring about the product or the vision of the community. Also, scanning irises and this super creepy orb. Look. Nobody knows when AI will become better than humans at absolutely everything. But there is a big chance that that happens. And in that case, some form of a universal basic income will be the only viable structure and relatively peaceful way in which we can all coexist and try to figure out what we're gonna do with ourselves next. If you have better ideas, I'm all ears. But I think currently, UBI is our best bet. That's why I'm somewhat inclined to respect Altman's early attempt at trying to tackle that problem, and it probably starts with some form of a proof of identity. But we need a better way of doing this. Even though I like the vision, I still wouldn't let one of those orbs scan my iris. I don't even have a rational argument for it. The code for it is open source. I genuinely believe they don't keep the iris data after the scan, but still my gut instinct tells me not to give away my data like that. In general, I think the vision might be right, but I'm not a fan of the execution. But yeah, I kind of like Altman. For some weird reason, I'm not too distrustful of him yet, even though he is on track of becoming one of the most powerful people in the world. Let's see how this develops. Next, Evolutionary Scale is a biotech startup led by ex-meta AI researcher Alexander Rivas, and they just raised $40 million to basically continue working on the same project that Meta shut down a few months ago. The project was working on a transformer-based AI model that was going to discover new potential protein structures that can be used for new drugs that could cure diseases we haven't been able to cure so far, but also even microorganisms that could help fight pollution, interesting, and also alternative ways to manufacture industrial chemicals. This is exciting stuff. As far as I can tell, biotech and AI is just getting warmed up and we're gonna see a lot of new life-saving drugs. And while we're in this vein, a team of researchers at MIT used AI to discover a new drug for Escherichia coli. I guess this kind of research becomes more and more important as bacteria evolve along with our antibiotics. I'm not sure if the ultimate solution is to keep making stronger antibiotics though. In fact, Maybe we should consider solutions that would try to limit our dependence on antibiotics. But I guess there's nothing wrong in having a powerful antibiotic at our disposal, even if we don't use it en masse, and even more importantly, have the technology to develop new antibiotics quickly if the need arises. And more AI healthcare news, scientists at the Cardiovascular Data Science Lab develop a new way to detect a common heart disease known as severe aortic stenosis. They trained an AI to identify the disease from ultrasound scans of the heart and now will be able to use machine learning to provide point-of-care ultrasound screenings for the disease. Good. If you're a man watching this, there's a 1 in 4 chance that heart disease is the thing that gets you in the end. With technology developments like this, you can finally die from being too disappointed with your children or being poisoned by your wife or by blowing yourself up in a huge firecracker experiment gone wrong, which is probably the best way for a man to go. And finally, a survey by ThumbTrack on 1,000 Americans between the ages 18 and 30 finds that almost half of them, or 47%, now consider a trade job. A big reason for this high number is AI, since young people seem to believe that white-collar jobs are at risk of being automated first. Well, good. Skilled trade jobs can be pretty great, I guess. You're working with your hands, you're building or fixing or creating stuff, salaries are improving. In fact, in many places, there are shortages of skilled trade workers. But I think that the fear of AI is a wrong motivator. Maybe fear can be a good motivator sometimes. It hasn't really worked for me, to be honest. I usually make bad decisions when I'm scared, but some people swear by it. So I guess we're all different here. The thing is, 
white collar jobs may be more at the risk of automation in the short term but if you've seen a few of the other episodes on this channel you probably already know that real world mechanical automation is also on its way trade jobs are probably safer than desk jobs right now but in 10 years even that can very easily change still reinvigorated interest in trade jobs is a good thing in my opinion and when it comes to ai i guess we have to take it one day at a time not worry too much about potential and distant problems that still don't exist and we're not even sure they will ever exist that's the way it is that was the air report hope you guys are having a great time like and subscribe do your thing i appreciate you guys and i will see you tomorrow